Welcome back from um, Half Term, and we are going to start by looking at um, a topic called recurrent relations. Now, recurrent relations um, is something we're going to unpack. This is going to be a bit of an introduction, and then we are going to see how it can be used and applied. But the basic idea in any recurrent relation is it's some process which generates um, a sequence of numbers where that sequence is the next step is determined by the previous one. So you might have met this kind of idea where you start a sequence, something like four, and then we take that number and we times it by three and add one, say. So if we take four times three, you get 12, add one is 13. And then we repeat that. So we're generating ourselves a sequence by timesing by three, adding one, and we can keep going, times three, add one, and keep doing that as many times as we want, and we will keep getting a sequence. Now, the key thing that defines this is each term is determined by doing the same rule to the previous term. So each time we're doing something to this term to get the next one, and we do that same set of steps each time. This is actually very like the mortgage calculation that you have just done. Because um, the mortgage calculation involved finding a percentage and then taking an amount off. Find a percentage, take an amount off. Find a percentage, take an amount off. So those kind of processes actually fit into this idea of a recurrence relation. Now, mathematicians have some ways to talk about these. Um, so if this sequence here, we're going to give it a name. Now, you can call it what we want. Um, this one is going to be sequence A, and for sequence A, this is my first term, um, and so we'll call it A1. This is my second term, and we'll call that A with a little 2. So we actually label our terms by having the letter, which represents what sequence we're in, and then the little number, so it's called a subscript. So instead of like a little number at the top, which is a power, this is a little number at the bottom, um, call that a subscript. That tells us which term of the sequence we're in. So this would be A3, this would be A4. There is something that comes up quite often uh, when we're working with recurrent relations. If I took the number one and I times it by three and add one, that would get me to four. So often, when we're working with a recurrence relation, you'll start, actually start with term zero, and we call that A0. And that's just something to be aware of. Um, we would call that the zeroth term. Now, let's build this up a little step further. We could come along here, and eventually we might pick, say, the hundredth term, or the thousandth term, or the 927th term. If I pick some random term in here, it'd be good to be able to label that with a letter. And we do that by calling it the nth term. So however many n is however many times we've gone along. And we've got a little label for that, which is a n. Now the next term after that, well, if I pick the hundredth term, the next one is a hundred and first term. If I pick the 927th term, the next one is the 928th. So all we're doing is adding one to the number of the term there. So that's the n plus one term is the next term. So if we go, we're at the nth term, the next one is the n plus one term. So let's label that a n plus one. Now all of these little bits of notation we're going to use because this rule can now be described using this. If I'm at a given term, a n, then I times by 3, or I do 3 a n, and I add 1, and that gets me to the next term, which is a n plus 1. So if I'm at a term, I can times it by 3 and add 1, and that gets me to the next term. So this is a recurrence relation. Now there's one other thing that we need to know for a recurrence relation. And that is one of the first terms. So this bit here is our recurrence relation, 
But to actually generate the sequence, you might need to know something like a naught equals one, or you could be told a one equals four, and that would then let you generate your sequence. So you actually need both these parts to have a full recurrence relation. You've got to have the connection between the two terms, the current term and the next term, and you have to have some information about a starting term. Now, in the next video, I'm going to show you some examples of this in action. Um, but hopefully that gives you an idea when I write down the notation what it actually means.